The use of soft toric contact lenses to correct astigmatism has become routine around the world these days with the advent of moulded soft toric lenses from the major manufacturers. Manufacturers will normally indicate the direction of axis of a lens by use of location markers either at 6 o'clock or in the horizontal. If the lens decides not to locate exactly on axis, however, it requires a certain amount of estimation on the part of the practitioner to indicate the degree of rotation. What I'd like to show you in these next two clips is a simple method of using a regular slit lamp to more accurately determine the degree of rotation of your soft toric lenses. To demonstrate the effects of a misaligned cylinder, I use this calculator that can be found at opticampus.com. What we do is simulate the effect of an astigmatic eye by placing the necessary prescription in the top two boxes here. So here I put zero in for the spherical power, and I put plus 275 to simulate an eye requiring a minus 275 sill, and we'll align the axis at 180. So now let's apply our corrective lens. We need Plano in the spherical power box, and this time we'll put minus 275 in the cylindrical box, and we'll put a 180 in the cylinder axis and press calculate. As expected, the resultant prescription is Plano. Now let's just see what happens if this cylindrical correction is misaligned slightly. So we'll go back up to the cylinder axis and we'll simply change it to 170, 10 degrees off axis. We'll press calculate and suddenly we have plus 050 very much with a minus one sill and more importantly the axis is at 130. So we'll see that this cylinder just being misaligned by 10 degrees can induce a whole diopter of astigmatism at 130 which is going to be more distressing for the patient as it's an oblique cylinder. As the cylinder power goes up, the importance of having an accurate aligned lens increases. In order to demonstrate this technique, I've used a lens that has the marking lines along the horizontal. Here we can see them at 9 o'clock, and if we have the patient look the other way, we can see the 3 o'clock marking. These are slightly misaligned, as you can see. And so what we'll do is to narrow the slip lamp beam and then rotate the slip lamp beam to align with the two markers. And having established the location, we then ask the patient to blink several times to make sure that the lens is centering and returning to those positions. And this is the, uh, the position at which the lens will ultimately settle. We can then refer to the scale at the top of the slit lamp to precisely measure the misalignment of the toric markings. In this case, they worked out at just over 10 degrees, 11 degrees was the exact measurement, which was similar to the example I showed you in the OptiCampus calculator. The same technique can be used with the slit lamp in the vertical alignment to look at the more common marking, which is normally in the 6 o'clock position. It's not as easy to ensure that you're correctly aligned because there is rarely another mark at 12 o'clock to align the beam with. However, you can locate the marking and estimate the, the rotational effect much more accurately with this technique. I hope you found these two short clips interesting and useful. If you have any tips of your own that you feel you'd like to share with us, please get in touch and we'll be pleased to include them. Mm -hmm.